Hello and welcome, this is JNM with a new Substance Painter tutorial for beginners. We start with this cylindrical model that we created in the previous tutorial with Blender. The mesh is unwrapped already and I export this now as FBX. For exporting I'm using a template and I'm just exporting the mesh. There's no armature so I disable this. The name of the FBX is Metal Wood. I don't know if I will add wood and metal, perhaps I will use different materials in Substance Painter, but anyway, now I export this as FBX and start Substance Painter. This is Substance Painter 2018 and there's an update available, but I will skip this. And now we can start with a new project. So I open the file menu and choose new. Ok, in this dialog I select the FBX that we exported. Press open in this dialog and then the OK button. And here we can see the model. It has a default material, it appears in white. And here in the toolbar you can change between autographic and perspective view. I switch to autographic now. When you hold the ALT key and the mouse wheel pressed you can pan the view and when you press the left mouse button and the ALT key you can rotate it. With these items here in the toolbar you can change between free and constraint rotation. Snapping the view can be done when you hold ALT, then the left mouse button to rotate and then SHIFT to snap it. With this menu here you can enable 2D and 3D view or you can enable both in a split view. In the 2D view you can see the UV islands that we created with Blender while unwrapping. And in Substance Painter you can add materials or textures in both views. Ok, before we start to add materials to our model, we have to bake some mesh maps. Just open the texture set settings and press the button Bake Mesh Maps. Here you can define which maps you want to bake. I bake all of them except the ID map. The other maps like curvature, thickness or position are taken into account by some materials and I keep the resolution to 2K. Ok, then I press this button to bake the textures, this will take some time. And after that we are going to add the first material to the model. To do this I open the layer stack because we will drag the material into these layers. The materials shelf is already opened and I want to add a metal material, we have quite a few of them, so let's see which one could look interesting. This one here could be great, this iron raw. So let's just drag it into the layer stack and a fill layer is added and uses this material. Alright, looks good, but now I want to add a second material and I want to add it to the middle part of the mesh. So now I'll show you a technique on how to do this using masks. So the first thing I do is to drag another material into the layer stack above the first one. Ok, this looks nice, but the UV scale is a bit too small. When I increase this, I increase the tiling of the texture. Ok, a size like that looks quite nice, but the problem is that it is added again as a fill layer and this fills the whole layer and therefore the whole mesh. But we just wanted to add it in the middle of the mesh. And to achieve this I will go ahead and add a black mask to this layer. But after adding this black mask you don't see the material at all. So we have to add white parts to the mask where we want to see the material. And this is where the tool Polygon Fill comes into play. After enabling this tool you can see the UV islands and as you can remember I want them to be straight. And the reason for this you can see now when I paint with the white color here into the 2D view onto the UVs. The material is visible now for these parts and the texture is nice and straight as the UVs are. So this is how to use the Polygon Fill tool. The texturing looks already quite good, but it is too clean, there is no dirt. 
which is not realistic. But to add some dirt to the model is quite simple. I will add a new layer for this and this time I will use a smart material. So let's switch to the smart materials shelf and then I type in dirt to search for dirt materials and I use the first one which is called dirt and I just drag it again into the layer stack. Okay, this is really a lot of dirt and too intensive, but we can configure this smart material. Let's see how to reduce the intensity and make it look more realistic. So first I select the mask editor and then I bring down the contrast. This looks much better, now you can play with the textures. There are two of them in this smart material. And the goal is always to make it look more natural. So play with the parameters, see what works and what doesn't, till you have the feeling that the effect is not too intensive and fits your model nicely. Alright, this looks quite good, but I don't want it to be too intensive here in the curvature, so I bring this slider a bit down. You can also change the randomness of the textures. Sometimes you can create nice variations with this. But I'm still not happy with this because I don't want this dirt to be all over the model. So I will again use the mask technique and add a black mask to the dirt layer. And again the black mask is applied and we don't see anything of the dirt. So to bring it back again we have to add some white parts and this is the first time we are going to use brushes and paint some parts in again using a white color and an artistic brush. I increase the size of the brush by holding down the control key and the right mouse button and then I move the mouse. And now you can make some parts visible again of the dirt by painting in a white color but I decrease the flow of the brush so that I'm able to add these with a kind of low pressure and very carefully. Just brush slightly over your model and add the dirt where you want it to be. When you paint this in it could happen that you added too much of the dirt and you want to erase it again so you can switch to the eraser tool and also decrease the flow like you did it for the brush and again adjust the size and then I erase the parts for which I have the feeling that I added too much of the dirt. Ok, now I continue this process till I'm happy with the dirt material. Ok, that's it, the model is textured. What you can do in the last step is to improve the environment, the display settings for example, increase here the opacity value for the environment to make it visible, and decrease the blur a bit. Ok, looks good, shadows could also look nice. I enable them but I decrease the opacity. And then I enable some post-processing effects, for example anti-aliasing. And a bit of glare but don't overuse this, so I turn down the luminance. And last but not least, I enable the vignette. Alright, I think that's a quite good result for 8 minutes of work. And I hope you got the idea following this tutorial on how to add materials, textures and masks to your models using Substance Painter. It's a very powerful tool and in my opinion the most professional on the market for texturing. What you can also do, you can see this here, is to change the opacity value of a layer and in some cases you can achieve really interesting results. Once your model is textured you can go ahead and press File, Export Textures and export them to be used in the game engine of your choice, for example Unity or Unreal Engine. 
For instance, here for Unity, you can use the textures for PBR texturing, and here on the right you can define the size of the textures. Ok guys, that's it what I wanted to show in this beginner tutorial for Substance Painter, I really hope you like it. And if you do, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you want to support it, just think about being my patron. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks for your support, and I'll see you on JNM.